Hi Taurus, welcome to your September 2019 love reading. It's Rena here. And uh, let's see. So in September we're going to have a full moon in um, in Pisces. Well, you know, it's interesting because as the month of September begins, we're coming off of a new moon in Virgo and there will be a lot of Virgo energy at the beginning of the month and this is your fifth house of romance so for those of you who are single this can be a great time for a new love relationship actually you know that first um, blush of romance especially so for meeting somebody and um, this reading is for people who are either single or in relationships and then we're going to have a, a full moon. This is going to be in your 11th house. And that's not really connected much to romance uh, specifically, unless there's somebody who you are friends with and you realize that they are not just your uh, friend, but you feel like that sense of... Um, love for them because sometimes with full moons there's um, an awareness that is made and the 11th house is the house of friendships so you know you might be aware that a friend that you have is more than a friend in your mind or in your heart so that's a possibility Perfect. Perfect ending. <laughs> okay. So the heart of the matter is the Magician card. This is one of my favorite cards. I found out recently that this card is connected to Aries. I've always connected it to Gemini because I had heard that uh, the Magician was connected to Gemini. But, um, you know, I see the one, so that's uh, Aries is the first house, it probably has something to do with uh, that idea of the self, you know, which Aries definitely does represent. And um, the magician is all about self-empowerment and kind of doing things on your own. So let's say you're somebody who is in a relationship. Uh, Taurus people tend to be very relationship oriented. I mean, even though it's an earth sign, your ruler is Venus, and there is that always that awareness of love as being part of your life. And therefore, you may have that, in some cases, a dependent attitude. A lot of Taurus people fall in love early in life, and they, they want to be in a, you know, a relationship with a significant other very early, maybe um, before their peers do. And this is, like, wonderful because... It shows that you have a capacity to love, but on the the um, kind of the challenging part of that is that it can lead to over dependence in a relationship where you don't have your own sense of self. It's all about the other person. It's interesting that Taurus is the second sign, uh, you know, like the second house, because two, you know, what does two mean? Two means like a couple, even though it's um, ruled by Venus, it's not, you know, connected to romance in and of itself. Um, but uh, in any case, I still think about that. And I think, huh, maybe there's something to it, you know. But in any case, you may be learning how to stand on your own two feet. If you're in a relationship with somebody and you feel like they're not treating you properly, you might in the past have kind of almost like begged them to change, and I don't mean like literally beg, but just like in your own mind, hope that they would see the light or told them, you know, please, you know. Yeah, I guess it is kind of like begging, isn't it? And nothing has changed. And now you're like, whatever, you know, I'm my own person. 
And this is great because I always say when you change, everything around you changes. And um, so even if you never do anything, because you, you can't really, you can't force anybody to change. But even if all you do is focus on your own growth, that will automatically make it so that the person that you're dealing with is going to see that you're no longer controlled by their behavior. This is kind of what I think they teach in AA, which is, you know, like kind of disengaging from the alcoholic and, uh, and really kind of focusing on your own needs. So I would say that is front and center for you in September for some reason. And even if you, like, if you have, have been wanting to meet somebody and you're kind of like a little bit um, frustrated because maybe you did rely on other people to help you, uh, hey, you got a friend, blah, 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 this may be like you realizing that you have to go out and kind of like co-create this relationship. In other words... One thing you can do, and if you're listening to this before the new moon and even a few days afterwards, is set your intentions for what you want in a relationship. Um, I was just watching this, I don't know what you would call her. I don't, I mean, she's probably a psychic, I guess, but she talks a lot about some of the energies that are coming in. And she does mention astrology, but she mentions other things too. And uh, she was talking about the fact that in um, September, after, you know, because Saturn is going direct on September 18th, and she was talking about how that's going to anchor in all of the things that, um, if you set, set your intentions, or she was talking about co-creation, and saying that that, you know, since that Saturn is retrograde, you know, maybe she means that it's more of an internal dialogue, but then when Saturn goes direct, it's like making these things manifest. And that really intrigued me because I, you know, sometimes astrologers kind of ignore some of the outer planets when they go retrograde and don't really talk about them too much or act like it's not going to affect people personally. But from what this woman was saying, it really sounded like, it has a, a pretty big impact, especially if, you know, or actually whether you know it or not. Uh, and um, so with the Magician card, if you're single and the fact that the new moon is in your fifth house, sit down and write, do something tangible, you know, writing it out and saying, this is what my perfect partner would look like. And I don't mean, you know, physically, although you could mention that if you really feel like there is a sp specific reason why that's important. But you have to make sure that w the kind of attributes that you're looking for are things that are really important in the long haul. Uh, because that's what this is about. We're not talking about, wow, this hot stud, you know, this is what, I, <laughs> this is what I'm looking for. So that might be a good thing. And so you're creating that magic. Um, by doing that. And I used to shy away from the word magic because I thought it was like hocus pocus, like, you know, when I say hocus pocus, like random things happening. And I, I like it now because I realize it's totally intentional. It's totally about what you decide to do. But there has to be a belief that the Taurus person has that they have any control over their reality. If you think that everything is left up to chance or faded, you know, that you that you are just kind of waiting around and hoping that something good's going to happen. That's a you know, I can't help you with that. But if you if you say, you know, I think that I can attract this person to me and I'm so excited about that. And this is what I'm going to do to get there because there is that you know, element of taking action on your part in that co-creation process. And in the past position, we have the Six of Pentacles, 
Now this is that give and take, you know, in this particular context, in the general context, the Six of Pentacles can indicate somebody who has the means helping somebody who is needy, who is in need of money, okay? You know, Pentacles is Earth energy like you, you know, as Earth signs like you is part of this. Maybe there's an Earth sign person that you've met recently, another Taurus, a Virgo or a Capricorn. Maybe this is talking about that new moon in Virgo. But in any case, um, in love, I always think of the Six of Pentacles as give and take, that there ha has to be an equal energy exchange. Doesn't mean that both people should be like keeping a ledger of how much money they put into the relationship. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that each person really wants to be there and they really invest their time and effort into the relationship. That means that it's not a one-way street, that you are the one that's always saying, hey, let's do this, or, um, but even that, that's not such a big deal, like, hey, let's do this, if the other person isn't really like that, but if you're the one who's almost like forcing the other person to participate, go to the movies with you, um, if you're always calling them and they don't even call you, if you're telling them you love them and they never seem to show affection to you, then it is a one-way street. So it's all about energy investment. And you may be realizing in a relationship that you're in that it's not there. You may also be realizing that if you're single that you do have to put time into it because um, actually when I look at the higher message I have the ten of wands and this can be somebody who's working really hard so this could be the spiritual message saying to you how do you expect to have a, a relationship when you're working all the time you know where do you expect to meet this person yeah I mean I know that people meet on the job and things like that, but that's not really encouraged a lot of times. And um, even in the case of some people who do that, um, you know, that's not going to be how everybody is able to meet someone. And so you may just be in a stage of your life where you're trying to establish yourself career-wise and you just have a lot on your plate. And so you have to you have to really be realistic, Taurus, and, and realize what you're up against. But for some people, that Ten of Wands is taking responsibility for things that don't belong to you. So in relationships, are you a codependent? Are you somebody who is always apologizing to the other person, even for things that you didn't really do because you feel like guilty about things or they try to make you feel guilty. They, they're manipulative. You know, is that is that kind of a dynamic in the relationship? Are you, like I said before, always the one that seems to want to keep the relationship going and, you know, trying to have nights out and do things and the other person doesn't seem like they're really into it, that they want to um, invest time in you. And it's almost like you're trying to, to do that. It's saying, look at that. Nip that in the bud. If you're single, don't go down that dead end road again. And you can nip it in the bud. You can see if something is going in that direction, if you're willing to look at it. What cross is used represented by the Seven of Swords? So this is in the challenged position. Do you have a tendency to be involved with uh, a person who is a cheater, for instance? Um, when I do private readings, love readings, um, I will see certain things that indicate like a trend. And it usually is related to Neptune, either Neptune in the fifth house, Neptune in a hard angle to Venus or the Moon or Mercury where the, the perception is 
distorted and the person doesn't really see things as they, as they really are. They see things colored by their fantasies, what they want to be true about life. And that can be very difficult because a person may be in denial that, that, that this is really happening to them, that they're really like this. And um, the Seven of Swords can also be, I mean, this is a card of um, strategizing or going your own way and maybe you are again like maybe you're not willing to entertain this notion you might be in a relationship that's one-sided and you realize that you hold the power but you're not ready to take it further like how am I going to get out of this what am I going to do like what are the specifics that I need to focus on in order to move on with my life. What's coming in is a page of swords. I think you're going to begin to pay attention to like little clues that are going on. I call this a spy card where you may begin to, your uh, suspicions may be heightened um, because of the behavior of this other person if you're currently with a partner. If you're a single, it might be starting a relationship uh, with somebody and um, having more vigilance, having more, like I said, you know, being able to nip this in the bud. Um, it could possibly be with a, an air sign individual because um, the swords connect to Gemini Libra and Aquarius and the outcome is a beautiful card I mean like I said for those of you who are single this could be new love coming in but this is love because this is cups this is like the real deal when it comes to love um, fifth house a lot of fifth house activity if you're somebody who is romantically involved or maybe you're in a marriage um, there may be somebody who comes into your life and you you have not um, you know extricated yourself from a situation and perhaps this will hasten your desire to you know, and that other relationship. Because like I said, with the Seven of Swords in the challenge position, you may not be, uh, even if you're aware that you need to do something, you may be kind of resistant to kind of like leaving and, and doing so. I think like the Seven of Swords in the upright position, sometimes it can mean um, leaving a situation in a very subtle clever way um, but I to tell you the truth with the seven of swords this can also be that you're in denial over your partner's cheating and so that makes it harder for you to leave but I think that in that case you're going to become more heightened uh, and, and with your suspicions and somebody new may come into your life like a new love and that will motivate you to kind of leave that situation that you're in. A lot of people think that fixed signs are loyal, especially Leo. Leo always is like, Leos are loyal, but it's because they're fixed signs. But really, the more I think about it, I think a lot of it has to do with your own self-interest, that you don't want to change. <laughs> And if it means that you're with somebody who isn't quite um, living up to how you your expectations, you might stay because you don't want to have to um, start all over again. So it might not be as altruistic as it seems. Let's put it that way. <laughs> you might be doing it for your own self-interest. Okay, well... In any case, I like the way this ends, and I hope that you enjoy this, Taurus. If you'd like a private reading, I do 
love readings probably more than any other type of reading. And um, most of my readings are astrology based. And so I really tune into the kind of the two people involved and what's going on and that sort of thing. So the link to my website is below. It's rainamoonastrology.com. Take care. Bye.